I've been entrusted with my grandfather's photo album, which covers his entire life beginning in his boyhood days when he worked behind the counter as an apprentice at a local pharmacy. Here he is at age 14 at the soda fountain, a little like Jimmy Stewart in It's a Wonderful Life. Just three years later, in 1917, he would join the U.S. Naval Reserve and after training, be assigned to Subchaser 268. Nearing the end of the conflict, at some point, this boat, as well as the shore patrol boat Satilla, was assigned to construction work, and it was at this time my grandfather acquired a camera. On this enlarged photo of himself on the deck of the Satilla, he chose to write a brief introduction describing this mission, as well as a list of all the destinations they visited along their journey up and down the main coast. Obviously handing his camera off to someone else so he could appear in a picture, here he is, the third from the left. The mission objective, quote, repairing an erection of radio compass stations, unquote, involved many locations as far south as Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and as far north as Cross Island, near Machias Bay, a range of some 200 nautical miles. So SC-268 and SP-687 joined forces for this naval communications infrastructure mission. The shore patrol boat had been in this region for some time, as documented in these official naval photographs. It was not uncommon for the Navy to press civilian ships into service. Such was the case with the shore patrol boat, which began its life as a yacht. In similar tradition, the boys of SC-268 would secure the services of a local runabout named the Bertha. The crew used this handy little vessel for ferrying themselves around quickly, towing flat-bottom boats loaded with lumber and supplies from the larger ships. And of course, the Bertha was very handy for some of these shallow anchorages they would be encountering. Here's my grandfather, hot at work, holding a hammer. The Coast Guard Station off Machias Port. My grandfather really was developing a good eye for photography. A small gun was used to shoot lines to buoys or for rescue work. Okay, Navy man, put up your dukes. Our charming sub-chaser boys, of course, started making many friends. There's my grandfather trying his luck. The good ship Bertha would soon be playing a role in this aqua social life. The list of lady friend acquaintances was growing fast. I believe my grandfather was quite smitten with this young lady as the caption reads, Beautiful Virginia Gilson. There she is, behind my grandfather, at the wheel on the berth. And then he allows her to take the wheel. Yes, indeed, a good time was had by all on the good ship Bertha. I'd wondered if some of these extracurricular activities had garnered someone's attention. After all, a lot of work had been accomplished, but the job was not over. The next two photographs show that Navy intelligence officers had taken command of the Bertha to use for an inspection tool.
Here's a nice snapshot of Booth Bay. And while there, my grandfather got a nice snapshot of a ship launching. At a four-masted schooner launching at Machias Bay. One of several picture postcards in the album. This is the Victory Parade in Portland, Maine. The lighthouse keeper on Monhegan Island and his son. The lookout on Monhegan Island. The rough seas on board the deck of the Satilla. 